Hi, this is David. Uh, in this video we're going to troubleshoot this Whirlpool uh, 2011 made uh, vertical modular washing machine. Um, it is computerized and what this machine does is uh, it, it fails to drain the water out all the time. Um, I've had a number of wet loads. It doesn't complete cycles. ends up with spin light on and, instead of done. Um, what we're going to be using uh, to help troubleshoot this is a diagnostics service manual. It's actually packed on inside the machine right here and, um, and the dial. And this thing uses the dial to use the LEDs to, to uh, uh, signal what may be going wrong with it to get into uh, various modes. There's a manual mode that we're going to use in particular uh, to figure out what uh, is failing here. And we're also going to use, I'm also going to be using a meter later on. Now I am a technician, a trained electronic technician, um, so I'm putting, I'm putting this in here for demonstration purposes. And just be aware that it's, if you're not trained to work safely on 110 volt live circuits, don't attempt this at home. Okay, so, uh, you know, thanks for watching and I hope you get something out of this video and let's, let's see if we can fix this. Before we dig into diagnostics, I'm going to quickly run through a cycle so you can see how mine failed. Um, maybe this will help you uh, if you just does something similar. So uh, let's get started. We'll run a quick load. And look through its various little pre-staging steps here. Okay, we're filling. Agitation's over. Okay, it went into a drain cycle. The drain came back on. Okay, now it's in the rinse cycle still. It just started agitating. Okay, the agitation part of the rinse cycle stopped. And he's still sitting here doing nothing. Six minutes have passed. It should be draining here. And now the rinse light went off. And lid locked along his on at this time. So after doing nothing for ten full minutes, the drain comes on. After over an hour, the spin light comes on, and it's done trying. So here's the results of that final drain. The clothes are wet. Water's been sucked out, but it has not been spun. So the spin light's on with no lid lock. This is actually a customer trouble code. We go to the manual here. We see that the spin LED on refer to long drain, page 7. We look at long drain. Fault is displayed when the washer level does not change after the drain pump is on for 10 minutes. Let's go into diagnostic mode. Counterclockwise. Quickly now. Clockwise, 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 counterclockwise, clockwise. When they're all flashing like that, it's in diagnostic mode. Okay, now we want to go into manual mode so we can run the drain pump. And to get there, we need to have the spin and done lights on. So we're just going to rotate this dial, click at a time, until we get spin and done on. So we're going to press the start button to activate the manual mode. All the lights are going to go off. Okay, here's what we're trying to do. We want to operate this drain pump manually. And so we're going to get it into the uh, drain pump manual mode. And we need to get the uh, rinse, spin, and done lights on. At the same time, just keep on click, 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 clicking until there it is. Okay, now we're going to hit the start button. To activate it. Okay, it's silent. It's dead. It should be running right now. So now we're going to have to uh, dig in here further, troubleshoot some more, and figure out where um, the uh, signal's getting lost. Where in the chain of command to that uh, drain pump we are losing our signal to run. Now, in order to troubleshoot this further, figure out where the fault is, I'm going to have to get at the uh, main control board, which is behind the operator console. You can see the elements that could be involved here. It could be wiring, could be on the main control board, there's a relay, and there's the pump, there's a shifter assembly, and then there's the neutral, the other end of the circuit, also on the main control board. So we need to get at that section. Okay, so we need to separate the main, the operator console from the, the main part of the machine. And, and to do that, uh, we use a putty knife. And on, on each, either end, there's a spring clip that snaps this cover, this console, into place. So, 
Um, you can see here how we can um, you see the spring action as I push this uh, putty knife in and out. Push it in, lift it up. Uh, repeat on the other corner, and um, and that's the first step to getting this console separated. Now in the back corner, there's a couple of uh, small hex head screws here. Okay, so I'll just lift it off the back. And there we are. So this is the uh, pump circuit here. As you can see here, there's the main control board. And I've got my meter set up right now. I'm on the third wire, which is J163. And I'm going to be looking for 110 volts there when this goes into the pump mode. Okay, I'm hitting the button now. Again, I'm on the third from the right as we're looking at the top board, JV16, J163. It's a blue wire. Okay, the pump should be running right now. Let's look over at this point for the voltage. So I'm getting no voltage here. Okay, that's it then. That implicates relay K7 on the main board. Okay, so we need a circuit board. No big deal, right? Yeah, big deal. $258 from Whirlpool. This is a $350 machine. Okay, uh, there's our board. Now, of course, um, I'm going to look this thing over and see if there's anything I can do with it. And also going to conduct a little, uh, a little search, see if we can come up with a less expensive uh, option to replacing the board with a new one. Maybe I used one out there. So in part three, uh, we're going to go about the process of replacing, repairing this board. You'll have to tune in to see which way I go with it. And uh, I'll see you there.